He is playing against Tarka Red right now, so you mentioned how the mana can come back to hurt you. We'll find out right now. Exactly. This is the type of matchup where if, if Tom gets a hand where getting blue mana is no cost, the blue spells are good here. However, if he ends up having a lumbering fall to start off the game, as you, as you see right here, <laughs> Um, if he doesn't find his blue cards, but he has to have an extra land coming to play tapped, uh, you don't have a lot of margin for error against a Tarka Red. A Dragon Fighter is where Ye is going to start. Ross with that darn Lumbering Falls. Actually, both of them have lands that are annoying. Not only does this land come to play tapped, but it does a lot of damage to the progressions of your battle lands down the line. I didn't have a full appreciation for what a cost Lumbering Falls represented until today, watching sure. and yesterday, watching these games where someone had to play off curve for the first four or five turns of the game because their battle lands were not coming to play untapped. Well, what's interesting, right, is it feels like it's kind of a freebie yeah. to be able to play Lumbering Falls, and it's anything but that. Now, the also the question you have to ask yourself is, is having this creature land in my deck worth it? How useful is Lumbering Falls going to be in those control matchups, and how useful is it going to be maybe in those mid-range matchups? Am I getting enough out of this, and are, is the juice worth the squeeze, as you like to say? Well, Lumbering Falls is incredible uh, from what I've watched, certainly against decks with mass removal effects. It's, it's just great protection. It's very helpful at taxing Planeswalkers. There's a lot to be said for it, but it's not free. Now, so take a look at Martin Ye's deck list, and he's going to play an Abbot here, so we'll see what it does reveal, and it's going to be a Zergo. What you're going to find here is what we saw something very early in day number one. It is a player here in Martin Ye that has dialed back on the pump spell some, only two copies have become immense, and one copy of Teamer Battle Rage to go along with three Titan Strength, and has upped the count of Exquisite Firecraft all the way up to four. So still playing what Brian DeMars was able to win with last week in Indianapolis, but has switched up how he's doing it. And Exquisite Firecraft has such a tournament resume at this point. It hasn't been around for very long, but of course was a dominant feature at... Uh, Pro Tour Magic Origins. Not surprising to see people gravitate to put it back in the deck, even though DeMars had so much success with zero copies in the 75. Zergo will be played thanks to that Bloodstained Mire for Cinderglade. Goblin tokens will come across into the red zone. And this Green Omega Morph deck can be a little slow off the ground at times. Ross does have a basic planes in hand. He could just upgrade the Warden of the First Tree right now if he'd like to. Well, it looks like he's just going to pass the turn back at this point. Ye will draw a card, picked up a copy of Monastery Swift Spear. There is a mountain for the turn. And I am sure that there's no game. It involves a lot of cheap creatures and a lot of swingy instants. There is no type of game that Tom Ross is happier to play than something like this. Here come the creatures. Tom is going to jump in front of Zergo. A little attempt to pump. Wild Slash will be the response. Now, Tom does have Dispel in his deck today, and he actually has Dispel in his hand, so he's going to counter that. And it appears this is going to work out pretty well for Ross. He'll have to take five points of damage, three from the Abbot and then two from the Goblin Tokens, but his Warden is a 3-3 now. Now the question if you're yay is, do I want to exquisite Firecraft that creature, or do I just want to play another creature? It looks like he's going to go with Firecraft to take care of the Warden. So from a development perspective, it's better for Ye to cast the creatures and then try to go for it next turn. The risk there is if Roth has Dramoka's command, everything collapses. So Ye making a conservative play there, making sure to get the creature off the table and uh, avoid the, the doomsday scenario involving Dramoka's command. Exquisite Firecraft is a nice one. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. Hangerback Walker in hand here for Ross. Could just play that for two if you'd like. Also has a copy of Hidden Dragon Slayer in hand, but he's going to go with Hangerback Walker. It is for two, and now he'll pass the turn back over to Ye. Ye will draw. And it looks like he's got a Monastery Swift Spear. There's also a Wild Slash there and a McKinney Slide Runner in hand. The one thing he does not have at this point is a Tarkus Command, the namesake card of the deck. Wild Slash will take care of Hangerback Walker. Thopter's on the way. Keep in mind, Prowess triggers, of course, for the Abbot and the Swift Spear. Here are the attacks. We'll see how Tom would like to block. At this point, he can basically cross the Tarkus Commands off, off his list, I think. I don't think there's any way if Martin has a Tarkus Command this turn that he would be able to beat it. Mm -hmm. So you just say, okay, well, if you have that, I, I lose. But, you know, I'll assume that you don't have that, I think, is his plan here. Exactly. 
It's just going to be way too much damage. It's going to make his blocks way too bad, no matter how he blocks. So just act like it's not there. Looks like he's just going to double block the Abbott. So that'll take care of that. He'll end up taking four slide runners to follow up past the turn. Yay is empty handed. Ross is the one with the cards. The question is, can he get him out of his hand? I was thinking about going down to seven from the flooded strand, but eh, maybe he will, maybe he won't. Now he will. I think all of the creatures in hand are, are Megamorph creatures. So can't really avoid it. One of them is a hidden Dragon Slayer, and Lifelink is pretty important at this point. He'll play that face up. He'll play Den Protector face down. And now he'll pass the turn back. Yay will draw. Slide runner, swift spear, two goblin tokens, four lands on the battle here for, battlefield here for Martin. Big question is, what was the draw step? A lot of good draws here available for him. A fetch land's not bad at all. It's oh. still tough for him to do much in terms of attacking. I suppose with the fetch land now, he has a 4-3, he can attack into Hidden Dragon Slayer. Now you see he's trying to figure out exactly how Tom would block if he attacked with everything. Or if he attacks with anything. And he will attack with everything. This seems to be a relatively good spot for Ross as far as blocks are concerned. Yeah. I think we'll see Hidden Dragon Slayer going to Monastery Swift Spear and the Morph go in front of just a token. That makes sense to me. And yep. if Ye had just drawn a regular land instead of a fetch land this turn, I don't think he could have attacked at all. Yeah. Because Ross could have put Dragon Slayer in front of Slide Runder, swallowed up a token on the same block, and very little damage was done on the other side. But the threat of making it a 4-3 made Ross's blocks much more challenging, and as a result, uh, Ye had just enough an incentive to make an Alva Strike this turn. The way his forces are being whittled away right now, Ross is going to fall down to four. Den Protector in hand, Forrest the draw. You do wonder exactly how Ross wants to use that Den Protector that's on the battlefield as well as the one in hand. When we watched Chris Anderson play this matchup yesterday, it was Warner the first year that got a lot of work done. So there's a couple paths Tom can take. He can get back the Dispel if he thinks he can win the game other than getting burned out. But with a with exquisite Firecraft in the list, it seems like that's unlikely. He's, right. going to, he's going to Dispel real fast. Now he'll play a Morph. He'll pass the turn back to Spell as his protection. You mentioned exquisite Firecraft being the problem here. But this does give him some protection around Tarkus command. This this cuts off a lot of Ye's potential draws to win the game. The problem is without a source of life gain and with no real path to end the game quickly, Ye's going to get a lot of draws for exquisite firecraft. Well, the trick here, I think, for, for Tom is this turn, as these are going to trade, there's going to be some trample damage. I think he wants to unmorph Den Protector, get back Warden of the first tree, mm -hmm. play it, pump it, pass with yes. his spell up, and then the next turn he can basically say, you need to draw your thing now. Mm -hmm. And it's got to be Firecraft. But he needs to, yeah, there needs to be a path here for Tom to start gaining some life. He's yeah. got some tools in the graveyard to do it. I think Warden is the best way for him to go towards that. Dramoka's command the draw is a really nice one. Yeah. I always got some more things to reevaluate. And it's possible now with Dramoka's command that Hidden Dragon Slayer becomes more attractive as uh, it's more mana efficient down the line than Warden is. He can get Dragon Slayer, play it down, still got to spell up. Yep. Next turn, unmorph, Dramoka's command's ready to go. Well, I like the play here of playing Hidden Dragon Slayer and being able to leave with both options, just kind of face up. Sure. It's not as, it's not as sexy, but. One thing he can do is maybe say, okay, I'll Dramoka's command, uh, put a counter, fight your creature, get life there. And, and then even an exquisite firecraft is the draw, yep. he's short. Yep. 
But the nice thing here is because of the exclusive firecrafts and sorcery, he can make this Tremokas command play now. Mm -hmm. Put a counter on my creature, fight your goblin. I gain three life, I go up to five, attack, gain three more life, go up to eight, and eight is a safe zone. Yep. Or no creature no creatures at five is also pretty safe. Mm -hmm. It needs at this point it has to be something like running copies of exquisite firecraft. Titan strength is gonna be the play in response, and I think Tom is gonna be forced to dispel that, which it's fine because he's going to get his life. He's going to go up to five. He's going to get to attack here, probably with both creatures, and start clocking Martin now. And so now Martin's got to draw real good, I would say. Well, now with Tom at eight, it's even Nick's running firecrafts doesn't do anything. Ross is going to gain some life next turn. And actually, the, the, the tough part here for Martin is he drew a wooded foothills. Obviously not ideal, but Tom can actually kill next turn. Mm -hmm. because he can fire a Blumbering Falls. You can see Tom actually push that forward and say, I'm just going to activate that. That's three. Hidden Dragon Slayer is three. That's six, seven, eight, nine from Den Protector. 10, 11, he's dead on the board. Wooded Foothills is a dead draw. And just that quickly, Tom Ross able to work himself back into that game and actually win that game over Martin Yeh. Bat Megamorph up a game here over a Tarka Red. Yeah, that was a, a great management of resources there by Tom. I mean, uh, great in combat. Great knowing how he wanted to sculpt the lines, protected himself when he had to protect himself, got aggressive when that was time. Uh, a very well-managed game. You know, it's a combination of two things there. Perf very, very good card management on Ross's side, and you got to fade some draw steps too. Oh, yeah. That's for sure. <laughs> that's that's all what it is when you're playing against Red. So Martin definitely had some draws that would be able to kill Tom. Atarka's command at certain spots, exquisite firecraft, all that stuff. Just wasn't able to find that draw step. And you see the merits of having Dispel in the deck there. If Ye just goes, all right, I'm going to exquisite firecraft, your ward of the first tree there on the third turn or fourth turn of the game, Ye probably wins. Yep. But he's thinking, okay, Tom probably either has Dramokas command or he's just planning on pumping. That's what he was playing around there in that combat step. It was Dispel, and Ye lost a lot of cards in that exchange. Sideboards is where we're going to go, and we will start with Martin Ye, and he's got two outposts each. Excuse me, two outposts each, two hangerback walker, two Thunderbreak Regent, two Fiery Impulse, three Arc Lightning, two Goblin Heel Cutter, and two copies of Roast. Like the copies of Goblin Heel Cutter, really like the copies of Thunderbreak Regent in this matchup and Fiery Impulse. I think Hangerback Walker is a little bit too slow. Not really the type of game Ye can beat Ross in. Uh, and Outpost Siege, much the same criticism. But the Flyers and the cheap removal, I like a lot. I know we'll find some more counter spells in Tom's sideboard. Two copies of Dispel, two copies of Evolutionary Leap, an Island, two Disdainful Strokes, Stratus Dancer, Surge of Righteousness, two Ration Clerics, a Master of the Unseen, a Cure, a Master of the Depths, and a Valorous Stance. Love the two copies of a Ration Cleric, the Surge of Righteousness, the Stratus Dancer, the two copies of Dispel. The counter spells, the removal spells, the blockers, just allow Ross to get out of the first couple turns of the game and then turn the corner with much better cards. Well, as these players do shuffle up here for game number two, Martin Ye will be on the play with his Atarka red deck. Always a great place to be with the red deck. But for now, we'll talk about the Season 4 schedule here on the Open Series. We're in Atlanta right now. Where someone's walking out of here with $5,000, 25 Open Series points, and an invite to our Season 4 Invitational. We take a break next weekend for the Pro Tour and for the Star City Game State Championships. And then it's Legacy in St. Louis. Yeah, as we mentioned, after that, we'll be in Dallas for Modern Standard in Philadelphia. After that, Grand Prix Atlanta. We have information about that event posted at StarCityGames.com slash GP Atlanta. A standard open in Kansas City, Legacy in New Jersey, a standard open series event in Denver, and then the Season 4 Invitational, Las Vegas, Nevada, standard and modern as the Invitational formats with a two-day $20,000 standard open series event December 11th to the 13th, and then a week later to close out the year, Players' Championship, Roanoke, Virginia, Star City Games headquarters, December 19th and the 20th. And of course, for all the main events that do take place up until December 5th, you'll be able to get the Hop and Rabbit Master playmat. There's bunnies, there's bombs, there's carrots. It's a play on Goblin Rabbit Master, of course, Magic Player's favorite goblin. That's and not true. Yes, it is. That's not true. I would know more about Magic Players and Goblins than you. Everyone is either a gobbly, Goblin Lackey person or a Mog Fanatic person. There are very few Mog Fanatic people anymore. Yeah, I know. I it's hate dying, to break it to you. It's a dying breed. It's not a particularly good Magic card anymore. It's a little sad. But as I mentioned, up until December 5th, our open in Denver, our first time back there in a handful of years, you can get this Hop and Rabbit Master play mat. So come to the main event. It's pretty simple stuff. You sign up, you get one. Absolutely. All the way through the open series events in Denver, which is December 5th, uh, anyone who enters one of our two-day $20,000 open series events will receive that play mat for free. Game number two on the way here for Tom Ross and Martin Yeh. Tom Ross, quite a few accomplishments on his resume. 11-1 in this tournament. Looks like we're going to have to change this graphic to six Open Series top eights in just a little bit. Yeah, here. on the verge of locking this one up. It's a little surprising to only see six. Oh, five right now, but 
only six. You would think more for the boss. I know we talked about this yesterday a little bit, but it seems a little low given the accomplishments for Tom in the Open Series. Yeah, given the quality of play, given the invitational resume, the Pro Tour and Grand Prix resume, you would have expected more Open Series top eights. He's had a lot of very good finishes, but uh, relative to the rest of his resume, a little light on Open Series top eights. Of course, he does love parkour, Mortal, Mortal Kombat 10, and he has a five-time Louisiana State champion. Him and I think Adam Prozac are the five-time state champions. There's got to be others out there. You think so? I believe so. Adam might be a six ball, actually. I'm not sure. He might be watching, be able to chime in at home. He's got a lot of Arizona State Championships mm -hmm. <laughs> to his name. <laughs> Miss watching him play Magic on the Open Series, too. Always a lot of fun to watch Adam Prozac play. Now he's designing cards and making Magic fun. Maybe one day he'll come out of retirement to do battle again. I don't know, it's a, it could be a cushy gig up there in Seattle, hanging out with a bunch of gamers all day, working on magic. Not a lot of people leave. I know a lot more people who stay than leave. Yeah, I understand, I understand. A lot of work to be done in that office. And I have to imagine designing magic cards is pretty fun and getting to test them and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. A lot of meetings, you like <laughs> meetings? I'm not actually particularly fond of meetings. Okay. No. Every job's got meetings. I know, unfortunately. I'm not a big meetings guy. I think people have a lot of perception of R&D jobs as, you know, it's like a popcorn machine in the office. <laughs> and it's kind of screwing around playing games all day. And there's a little bit of truth to that, but it's overstated. A lot of meetings. A lot of meetings. Tom, I'm going to take a mulligan here. Looks like Martin's going to keep his opening seven. Meetings oftentimes result in yelling, a lot of back and forth. Mm. Yelling's pretty rare. I mean, I guess it depends what kind of environment you work in, but. Well, at restaurants, when I used to work in those, a lot of yelling. Yeah. A lot of yelling. Yelling is usually the tool of someone who's lost an argument but doesn't want to let go. Well, I understand. I understand why the yelling takes place. It's not like they can't hear you before you yell. <laughs> If that was the problem, then someone should say something and then, you know, you speak up, but... I'm also, I also just, I hate the dry erase board. Uh, we, we have a lot of dry erase boards. I hate those, office. and I hate the dry erase markers. Love those, too. So, already, and I'm not inclined to want to be in a meeting. What's also really nice is, at our office, there's some walls that look like they're just the dry erase walls, but they're just not. So, there's oh. just... <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad. It's come up. It's yeah. come up. <laughs> Some of the walls have gotten a little little marker scarred. <laughs> Someone assuming that they could write on it. I don't believe the shelf life on dry erase markers is particularly long. No. So you have to replace them a lot, which is also annoying. And who even likes a dry erase eraser? It just gets stuff all over your clothes. We're going to have to agree to disagree here. That, that thing's horrible. But I'm not going to yell at you about it. <laughs> That's pretty nice of you. You know why? Because I can hear you just fine. So you can hear me just fine. A Zergo is where Martin's going to start. Tom did keep his six, but he's already under the gun. Looks like he's going to start with a wooded foothills and simply pass the turn back. So he'll be falling to 18 from Zergo here in just a moment. We'll see if Martin can make it more than that on his second turn. Looks like it'll just be two. Wooded foothills is the land here for Ye. He'll sacrifice that, go down to 18. We got a mountain on the way, and we'll see what's next for Ye. And yes, I've been waiting to do that the whole match. Just been, just been sitting here trying to figure out when you had a shot, drop that one. Yep. The slide runner. Todd will sacrifice that wooded foothills. He's going down to 17. We'll see what land he wants to get. He's gonna go with Canopy Vista. I'm getting some throwbacks to my, my open series event in New Jersey a couple of years ago. Guide into play at GOP, and now we are with Zergo into McKinney Slide Runner. Not it, quite the same thing, but it feels relatively similar. It's pretty close. Yeah. There's a forest. Here's a hidden dragon slayer. Now your your play here would be Fetchland Searing Blaze. That yeah, from years ago. Teetering peaks my GOP oh, Searing dear. Blaze. That. 
or stagger shock that if Ugh. my draw was bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's footage foot, excuse me, here's windswept teeth. That'll likely find a cinder glade. And it does. You can get a trigger there from the slide runner. Our trail, one to that, two to you. Whatever. A lot of different you can, lot of ways. A couple you can routes go. you can go, yeah. A couple routes you can go. Oh, there's Arc Lightning. All right, yeah. There, you go. <laughs> there it is. Same, nice, same little, play. <laughs> a nice little callback right there for you. <laughs> One of that, two to you. Come across here for a whole bunch of damage. Your turn. Don't know if Arc Lightning is great in this matchup. I think it's much more for the mirror match and other token generation effects. But, uh, you know, on the play, in this matchup, it's probably going to be pretty good. To me, it feels like it might be better than some of the other options in the sideboard, mostly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, the cards that I really like in his sideboard for the matchup were Fiery Impulse, the... Uh, the Thunderbreak Regent and the Heel Cutter. It's possible he just wants to get away from some of his instants now that he's seen Dispel. Like something like Titan Strength, even become immense, might be a little bit shakier now that you've seen Dispel out of the deck and you can anticipate more copies of that card. Nissa, that's Tom of Forest. He'll pass the turn back over to Ye. Tom here is just trying to block. Yep. That's block it. and trade. Landfall trigger. Slide runner's a 3 2 trampler now. Martin is trying to make that very difficult. Here come the beatdowns. Well, that block will work. A little bit of trample damage here. I think we got a Thunderbreak region. No, it's going to be a Hangerback Walker for two. Okay. And I'm not a huge fan of this card out of Ye's deck. I just don't think he plays this kind of long game nearly as well as Ross does. I don't want to play this kind of long game if I'm Martin. This does give you a bit of resiliency because you've got a threat that once it dies, you get some flyers from it, so that part's nice. Mm -hmm. But I'm not looking to go turn 8, turn 9, turn 10 against Tom. Megamorph just does that better than you, as it has demonstrated many times this weekend. There's a hanging back walker for Tom. We're going to go Martin's way. Hanging back walker, the draw for him. Looks like he has a swift spear to play. And I believe a dragon fodder to follow it up with. So that'll trigger the swift spear's prowess. And now here are your attacks. A little surprised not to see Hangerback Walker come in here. I guess Ye's logic here is you got the mana left over to, to pump into the Hangerback Walker. Going that wide, I would have preferred to get Tom down to one this turn, I think. And then you have four creatures in play against two, and Tom needs to do a lot to not die. That's a forest. A lot harder for EA to deal three than it is to deal one. Yeah. Especially when you have that large of an advantage in, in creatures in play. And I don't see a huge difference here between Hanger Backwalker being a 2-2 two -two and a 3-3 three -three long term. Tom does have a copy of Stratus Dancer in hand at this point. Warden of the First Tree, Dead and Protector as well. He's just really gummed up on the things that he can do at this point. All those cards quite powerful, but he needs a lot more mana to be able to actually use them all. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the reason to just trade early and often. You know, any of his five and six minute plays are going to be pretty potent if he can get the time to get to them. So you, you give up some long term power with some of your cards just to get out of the early stages of the game. Now, Tom can just dump his whole hand on the table there, but that doesn't seem like he's getting enough out of everything.
The Den Protector's face down, Stratus Dancer face up. Pass that turn back. Hanging back walker is going to grow on up. And that's an Atarkas command. So that'll just make it real easy. That'll go upstairs with Ross at three. And Martin Yeh is going to win game number two here over the boss. Atarka Rad, Bat Megamorph getting ready here for game number three. Fortunately for Tom, he'll be on the play against the Speedy Red deck. And you can see uh, what that deck is capable of doing on the play. Tom was able to block pretty early on in that game. It's not like his draw was that slow, but uh, he never got to make the profitable exchanges that you saw in game number one. He never got to blow Martin out in combat. And uh, slowly but surely, Ye was able to chip out, chip away. So Ye wants to take a look at Stratus Dancer, make sure he knows exactly what that can do. It's pretty powerful in this matchup, honestly. It's another one of those cards where if he's able to get to five or six mana in a comfortable board, it's a piece of the puzzle locking the game up. But early on in the game, it's uh, not much more than something to, to hopefully trade with one of Ye's cheaper plays. Well, as these players shuffle up for game number three, we're talking about the Star City Games newsletter. It's your source for Magic the Gathering news, and it's very easy to sign up for. All the finest information about Star City Games, both the Open Series with an update from what happened in the previous week's Open Series event, with a suggested match of the week for you to watch, and exclusive deck lists and advice from several premium columnists, and exclusive cardboard crack comic. Best of all, signing up is free over StarCityGames.com slash newsletter. We've seen the boss in the newsletter before. We see him now here in game number three, looking to lock in another open series top eight to place on his resume. Two invitational top eights here for the boss. He was able to go back to back last year. Pretty impressive stuff for Tom. This year has been a little bit different for him as he's kind of dabbled around a little bit. You know, I think part of the reason he was so successful last year is that people didn't take red decks as seriously as they do now. Yeah. But you saw Tom in 2014 and uh, a couple standard Pro Tour wins in 2015, and now perception's a little bit different. And, you know, I, I, I can appreciate as well that when Tom was taking advantage of how good red was and people didn't notice, and now he's basically said, I like to play red when people don't think it's good. Mm -hmm. And now I think a lot of the world has realized that red is pretty gosh darn good, and so Tom is kind of staying away. And I think a lot of credit goes to R&D for creating, uh, I think they've done a much better job of creating a world where all the decks are pretty close to each other in power level and people can kind of just pick what they like. Uh, red decks were, you know, very popular over the years, but just lower in power level than the good blue stuff or the combo decks of, of various extended and even standard formats. And now the red cards are about as good as the blue cards are and the green cards are and the white cards are and that just hasn't been uh, the case in much of Magic's history. Uh, a, a little peek at Vintage and Legacy would suggest that there was a slight misbalance in some of Magic's earlier years. Perhaps. I mean, even modern, I would argue, blue's the best color there, even with several power level bannings to blue cards. So it's taken some time, but I think they do a much better job now of getting all the colors to be pretty close to even. It's going to be some formats where it's different and, you know, some metagames where it's different and odd cards are going to slip through the cracks. But on the balance, I think they do a very good job with it now. Well, things will always improve over time, I'd like to imagine. I do agree with you. I think they do a better better job with it overall. Yeah. Like a target's command is a serious magic card. Absolutely. You know? The red decks aren't playing with volcanic hammers and, you know. Yamabushi's Flames. Yeah, hearth not, camis. Not that anyone would ever do that. Firebrand Ranger with no green mana in the deck. And yes, that was a thing before you ask. Boral's Guild Mage, no white, right? Just not little, like that anymore. You're not scraping the bottom of the barrel. A little callback to some of your better days. Mm -hmm. Now, were you playing Yamabushi's Flame and Yamabushi's Storm? No, I didn't have the Storm. Oh, that's too bad. Storm didn't hit players, so... <laughs> One way. Yeah, one way. <laughs> Going upstairs. Yeah, bonus points for burning your opponent out and also exiling them at the same time. Boom. Original achievement unlock card for that? Disintegrate. Wow. Ah, removed from the game entirely. You. I believe it's the alpha <laughs> template, if memory serves. <laughs> There's I've... no memory you were ever a part <laughs> of this. You are gone forever. <laughs> If you're playing pickup games in the basement, you have to go find someone else to play because you've been removed from this game entirely. 
Disintegrate used to have some nice wording, I must say. Alpha cards are a delight. Yeah, they really are. Canopy Vista here for Tom. He's down to 19 from the Wooded Foothills. We'll see what turn two brings. Remember, he's paying a little bit of a cost here with this small splash of blue. Feels free. Sometimes it is, but not in this matchup. Hanging back walker for one. Not a bad start, though. And unlike modern, not every fetch land gets every dual land. It's very, very rare in modern that that's an issue. But here you have wooded foothills that can't go get your prairie stream. And Tom might be functioning without blue mana for a little while. Just a basic mountain there for Yay. Windswept Heath the draw. There's a second mountain. And now he's got a hanger back walker, too. Ross picks up a Plains. Sometimes I watch some of the mid-range games and hanger back walker feels a little overplayed to me. It, low impact and kind of easy to work around. A lot of removal, exiles, et cetera, et cetera. And then you watch the red matchup and you go, never mind, can't cut these. Yep. <laughs> just, it's just so good against decks like this. It's very necessary in this matchup. Swiss Spear the draw. Two hanger backs is just a pain for Martin to get through. There is a chance that Ye will not deal combat damage this game. And it's just off this opening. Yeah. It's actually quite true. Being on the plane, having hangerback walkers might just be enough. And Tom, commonly playing decks like a target red, knows how dire the situation is for Ye already. Well, Ye's got a pretty tough third turn to think about here. One of these hanger back walkers, Tom can grow into a two power one. And the other one's going to stay at one because it's summoning, say. And then Ye's looking at Swiss Beer, exclusive firecraft, and a bunch of other stuff. Just trying to slog through this is just really hard. I mean, Tom's only played two cards this game, and Ye's already got quite an uphill climb. The issue here is that Ye's hand is probably some mixture of creatures that don't fly, pump spells, and removal. None of this is good against hanger back walker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's going to play a Swiss Beer and attack. Now, this is a bit interesting here. I think if I'm Tom, I, I most of all just like saying, I'll take one. Okay. I was wrong. He got in a point. But Tom could have shut the door on that if he felt like it. Tom gonna, excuse me, Martin's gonna sacrifice some windswept teeth. Tom in response is gonna put a counter on the hanger back walker. Cinder Glade is the land of choice here for Martin. So now he's got access to green mana. I think the fob's gonna be a dragon fodder. Well, we will find out soon enough. He's trying to go wide around hanger back walker, which is a way to do it. It's tough though. Ross will draw. Picked up a planes for the turn. A big issue also, it only gets worse. Now Tom's got Taroka's command, some lands in his hand. It's a good spot to be in. Tom kind of surveying the board here a little bit. See how he wants to move forward against Martin. It's just going to be a death miss raptor with a single mana available. So Ross in that spot had the opportunity just to say, all right, I'll go. I'll, I'll let you have the turn. I got Dramoka's command. I got lands to grow my hanger back walker. I think Ross understands that the easiest way for him to lose this game is for Ye to go around his hanger back walkers. And so Ross, if he feels it's a safe enough spot, wants to get some creatures into play to make these alpha strikes with five or six creatures more complicated for Ye. The more complicated, the better. Exquisite Firecraft going to go after Death Miss Raptor. That'll bite the dust. Swiss Spear is now a two power creature. And here come the attackers. We saw this attack last turn. A little bit different this go around. 
It looks like Titan Strength might be involved here on Martin's side. Top considering maybe a block with a hanger back walker here and activating. Both hanger back walkers are eligible to activate this turn. I, I think he I think he's aware of what this attack represents. It's it's low chance of wild slash, but high chance of Titan strength. And the issue is just does Tom want to choose this as the moment where he is blocking him and cashing in for some thopters? It's not like he's gonna get bluffed here, that someone's gonna have he's not aware about. It's just Am I willing to take this hit? Should I grow the hanger back walker one more time? And he's going to block with the hanger back walker now. And it'll activate. So the activation's on the stack. We'll see if Martin does have a response or not. And again, it looks like his hit right now was Mountain Titan Strength and Goblin Heel Cutter. He'll sacrifice that windswept teeth. We'll have a Cinder Glade on the way, I believe. And now I think we'll see that Titan Strength that we mentioned. After Titan Strength does resolve, Hangerback Walker is going to crack open. You'll get three Thopters. And the Swiss Spear is going to stay alive because of the Prowess Trigger plus Titan Strength giving plus one toughness. So everything appears to work out okay for Martin. Yeah, this one actually had five toughness yeah. there. Two prowess triggers plus Stay, titan strength. Please. Plus base two toughness. Yeah. yeah. So a very much alive. Not even close to dead. Yeah. We're also going to sacrifice a wooded foot. Excuse me, sacrifice a windswept teeth. Quick update for you guys. Aaron Barrett's playing Jeff Guy Black. Player from Mississippi area. Made the trip out here to Atlanta. He just defeated Bradley Carpenter, giving him his first loss. So looks like he... We're getting close to having both those players in top eight. Carpenter's basically locked up already, but Barrett's in great position to make a top eight here as well. And now Ross has done a great job of managing this game, has more creatures than Ye does, 17 life to work with, much more powerful cards in the deck, still has a hanger back walker that he can grow. Ye's hand, I believe, is a heel cutter, which is worth very little on this board. At this point, I'd rather hard cast it. It's going to dash a Zergo and I think dash a heel cutter here and try to work away at Tom's life total. All right, this is going to be his... This is the last punch of the game. We've seen these alpha strikes before over the course of this tournament. Yep. Just want to get him on the jaw one last time on the way out the door. He's all in. Everything that he's doing is face up. Tom has to remote command in hand. I also believe that the morph right now is a Stratus dancer, so he can bring back Deathmiss Raptor. Uh, there's a lot of ways for the boss to wreck him this turn. I don't even know if the attacks are very good for Ye just on the table. I don't think that I mean, they even are. If, even if Tom didn't have anything going on, I think this would be tough. Here's Ramoka's command. Put a counter on Hangerback Walker. Fight your Goblin Heel Cutter. Two more Thopters. And that works too. Sure. Uh, you may proceed. All right, go into combat. Here come the Knuckleheads, at least some of them. Some of them. It's just game states like this where I don't think Hanger Rack Walker's good in the matchup on Martin's side. Yeah, this is, it's still at a 1-1, and I just don't think Ye can play this kind of game and be favored. It's, you know, I don't mind Thunderbreak region coming in because that card's high impact. It flies. It can get you out of games you're losing. Hanger Back Walker, to me, is just sort of saying, all right, well, the games are going to slow down. I want a little bit more power of the deck, but I just don't think that Ye is equipped to win that kind of game. I can't let the game slow down. Yeah, I have to get you to seven or whatever and then try to burn you out. Where Something Thunder, like that. Thunderbreak region is acknowledging the game can slow down, but it's still part of your central game plan. And it's attacking one of Bant Megamore's biggest vulnerabilities, which is the air. They don't handle flyers all that well. So um, also with them probably covering Valor Stance in the matchup, it's much, much more likely to survive than it will game one. There's an Abbott. Top card, Wild Slash. Awkward Slash. The morph right now for Tom's a Stratus Dancer, so 
he can elect to counter this if it's cast or depending on what it targets. It's not going to get a whole lot of work done. Swiss Spear is going to come in here. I'm guessing this is going to be a no blocks. Yeah, I don't see much of a reason. He's a, he's a 17. Yeah. You know? And anything that he blocks with, you know, Ye actually gets to trade with with the prowess trigger, so. Yeah, Stratus Answer can't un more fast enough to count that Wild Slash to leave Nissa alive. And hey, a Death Miss Raptor, too. That's fun. The boss will untap. It's time to draw. Picked up a copy of Den Protector. All right. And th these are just the kind of spots when you get into a mid to late game like this where this Bam Megamorph deck just flexes its muscles because there are no bad draws. Yeah. He even can do stuff with lands. Yeah. He, even, his, even his lands are totally fine. He draws a land. He gets to flip Nissa. He draws a Den Protector. He gets to return to Broca's Command. Morphs. Uh, Warden, even your one drop is he good on turn back, seven. He can get back land number seven and flip Nissa if he wanted to. There's, yeah. there's a lot of good lines of play. And now, Tom, you know, we're talking about how commanding the position is. And right now, he's just doing the, I can play around everything. So let's assume that Ye draws perfectly, literally perfectly for the rest of the game. What's the right sequencing to make sure that even that doesn't beat me? And that's what he's trying to figure out right now. I just need to make sure that nothing happens. Close all the windows. You know, what's, the, what's your best top deck? What, Thunderbreak region maybe? All right, I want to make sure I don't lose the that card then. Stuff like that at this point. Russell untap. He'll draw. I think it may have been another copy of Nissa. A yeah, hanger back walker. Yeah, one of the two. Both not particularly fun to play against. He'll just pass the turn back with mana at the ready. My hanger back walker going to move up to three here I for Martin Yeh. That is time in the round. Wooded foothills is the land. But you can see just how Ye has been kind of just pushed out of this game now. There just really aren't good draws available for his deck. Yep. And when you're in that position, obviously winning is going to be very difficult. Once things slow down, it's, there's not a whole lot his deck is equipped to do. And note that this was a game where he was on the draw and didn't start with a one draw. Yeah. So that's also very notable. Got out of the gates very slowly here. First play of the game was a hanger back walker. And in a lot of matchups, you don't want to see that. But in this particular matchup, if you're on Tom's side of the table, you're actually pretty happy with that. Hanging back walker. Going to become a little bit larger now. And I think Tom's trying to see, can I attack for lethal at this point? Unmorph Den Protector. Get back to Mocha's command. And we've seen Tom Ross move this fast before. Everybody's coming into the red zone. Some blocking to be done here, potentially. Yeah, it's lethal unless Ye has help. He does not, and Tom Ross is going to win this match here over Martin Ye. Two games to one. Bent Megamorph will take care of a Tarka Red, and for the boss, he's 12-1. and one. You can lock it in. He's in the top eight now. Two losses will not knock him out. Congratulations to Tom Ross. Uh, adds another open series top eight to his resume.